Last weekend, I worked my first amateur radio contest. And when I got done, I found myself with the task of how to submit the logs to the ARRL. I wanted to send the log electronically, but it meant I had to convert the ADIF file from my QRZ logbook to a Cabrillo format. Here's how I did it. Last weekend was the annual ARRL 10 meter contest. I decided to turn around the band and see what was going on. I started down at the CW portion of the band. It was popping. There were stations all over there, but to tell you the truth, their speeds were a little bit too fast for me. I can handle 15 words a minute, and I don't do too bad with 20, but these guys are sending it more than 30 words a minute, and I was just a little too intimidated to stick around there very much. So I decided to tune on up to the phone section of the band and see what was going on there. Oh boy, there were stations there calling CQ, especially down in the lower section of the band where the technician guys can operate. So I'm listening, and here's stations calling CQ, CQ, CQ. Bingo, they're coming right back at me. I'm logging them down in my QRZ logbook and tuning the dial. I find another one. I work another one. Pretty soon I find that I'm grabbing these guys. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. And I'm thinking, you know, this contesting could be fun. Next thing you know, I was hooked. I was going to work the whole weekend. So I'm tuning the dial and working the stations, and every time I work a station, I write down the call sign on a piece of paper along with the exchange, which in the 10 meter contest is the state they're in. And then I go over to my computer. I enter the station's call sign up here in the search box, quickly click search. As soon as he comes up on the screen, I click log a new contact. That gets the timing pretty close. I may have to adjust the frequency that I'm using right here, and I need to mark in that the RST sent and the RST received are both 5.9. That's the standard signal report for a contest, regardless of how strong or weak the signal really is. Finally, I need to put in the exchange that he gives me, which is his state, and I'm putting that in here, Ohio, OH, in the ARRL section right here on the log. Once I filled out this form, I click Save. The contest lasted throughout the weekend, but the band is really open during the daylight hours. Once the contest was over, I ended up with 79 entries in my log. Most of them were in the United States, but I did pull in some countries like Japan, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Canada, Belize, Argentina. All in all, it was a lot of fun. Now the next part of the challenge is how do I submit this log to the ARRL so that I can become part of the contest results? I would find the answer to that on the ARRL website. Here I've selected the page that talks about the 10 meter contest. I scroll down through the page looking for something that talks about submitting logs and I find it down here in the section under miscellaneous. Here it says that we need to email the logs as a text file in a Cabrillo format. Now I'm pronouncing the word Cabrillo. I haven't heard it ever pronounced. Uh, I like to use a Spanish pronunciation when I see a word with double L's, but maybe it's pronounced Cabrillo. But for now, I'm going to stick with Cabrillo. So now i got to find out how can I take my QRZ log and turn it into one of these Cabrillo files. I googled a few pages, checked a few forums. This is what I found out. When you're on your QRZ log page, you can come up here where it says Viewing, and you can create a custom view. You would start by selecting New View. I got mine in here. Click View Options, and you can start bringing in filters to filter out to the data that you want to look at. I wanted to only see contacts that I made on 10 meters. I also wanted to only see contacts that I made after December 12th, which put me into the range of the contest. And I actually ended up logging a PSK-31 contact on a different band right in the middle of this time frame. So I added another filter here that says uh, that I only want to look at the single sideband matches. 
Now the screen you're looking at right here has an additional contact that I made after the contest was over with the Dayton Amateur Radio Association. This W8BI contact was not in the log when I downloaded it and converted it and sent it off to the ARRL. Once you've got the vlog filtered down to the contacts that you want, then you're ready to export it, and that's simply done by clicking this button that you see right here. You're going to see a message that tells you a little bit more information about what it is you're going to export. Notice that it says here that I'm exporting a log in an ADIF format. That's not Cabrillo. So we're going to have to do some more work once we get this log exported. I'll just click the export button down here. Now I get a message that tells me that I should go looking for an email and that uh, I'll be able to download my file from the email. That's true. I was able to do that, but I had issues with the download and ran into some other problems. In the course of doing it several times, I noticed that if I scroll down on this page, I will find a list of the files that I have exported. And I could click the download button here and let my browser download it. I'll tell it to save it here. I'm using Firefox. I'll say OK. And lo and behold, the file that we're looking for is right here. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say open the containing folder. So there it is. Here's the file that we just exported of our log from QRZ. Back to Google, I decided to find out how do you convert an ADIF file to Cabrillo. Google in the forums directed me to this file called ADIF to CBAR which unzipped and stored on my computer. You can download this file by clicking the URL shown here. There's a lot of things to fill out in here and you can give them some thought. Here you see my screen mostly filled out there's a section up here to find the actual name of the contest that you're looking for. So the ARRL-10 was there. That was easy. I tried to use state as the receive exchange over here. I added my part of the exchange in this box down here, WA for Washington, my state. And if you look over here on this screen, you'll see I have an error here. It says 15 meters. When I actually did this, I had the correct setting and there's 10 meters thought that might make some sense but I ran into a big problem and that is when I tried to import the ADIF file I kept getting an error. Let me show you what happens here. I hit browse and I go to the folder where all of these files are stored. I select the file, I say open and then I click the generate button and bingo. Here's this error message about EOH not found. I struggled with this over and over again and it seems like no matter what I did I kept getting this same message. One of the first things I did was to find the file and then attempt to open it with a notepad. I always like to look at things in notepad to see what's going on and sure enough there's a bunch of data sitting here on the screen doing all kinds of things that I don't fully understand I recognize that they're using some sort of tags here but look at here right here in plain sight there's an EOH it keeps saying there's no EOH found this had me stumped for a long time I pretty much came to the conclusion that there had to be some characters perhaps control characters or formatting characters in this file somewhere. Things that are not appearing, that don't show up in Notepad. Notepad's supposed to be pretty generic, but if there are control characters in there, it doesn't necessarily delete them. Clearly the EOH is there, so why it can't find it remains a mystery, but I come up with an idea. It occurs to me that if I close this file and open it instead with WordPad, I might see something different. WordPad is a little more sophisticated, and sure enough, look at here. There are definitely some sort of formatting characters in that file, and right here next to our EOH, we've got a tab in there that doesn't show up in Notepad. On a hunch, I go over and I say, I'll just save this as a plain text document. 
So let's see. I'll put it back in the same place. It's got to be an ADI file. I'll just call it mylog.adi. We'll close it here. So let's try again. We'll get rid of this error message. I'll go back in here. Let's find the file mylog.adi right there. Open it. I'll click generate. And it says it saved the file. I've created it. This is great. Let's go find it, see what we've got. Came right up. Here's my Cabrillo file. Well, it looks like we're making progress here, but I soon discovered that there are some errors in this file here. The way in which I entered the data in the QRZ logbook wasn't always perfect and didn't completely match up with the paper notes that I had taken. I needed to make some changes. An obvious one was the QSO with KU2M. It says here that he's in New Jersey. Well, that's where his license is registered. He wasn't in New Jersey when he was working the contest. The report I got for him was 59 New Mexico. So I need to edit that and correct it before I send it off. We have to close this window and reopen this file in a text editor to make the final corrections. So now we can go in and find this New Jersey right here and change it to New Mexico. And you can go through, fill in the gaps, find out what's wrong, and make all the changes that you need to get the log in the format you want. Then you'll save it, and it's time to send it off to the ARRL. The ARRL uses a different address for each of their contests. So you want to go to the web page that talks about the contest and find the address that you're supposed to use. I'll just copy it here. I'll go over to my email. I've started a new message here. I'll paste that address in. The subject of the message will be just your call sign, WB7FHC. Do not put anything in the body of the message at all, but simply attach your log. There it is. And we'll put it up there. It's important that the file be your call sign dot log. And we simply send that. A very short time later, I check my email and I've got a message back from the contest robot. It says it's unable to process my log submission. I made a mistake somewhere in my file. There are two kinds of errors that you might get when you submit your log. As luck would have it, I got both of them. Remember, this is the first time I've done this. The first kind of error is unfortunate, and that is if you put in something that it doesn't understand, whereas I had the mode here wrong on my sheet, it defaults to the most general setting as it was. I had put in PH for phone. The correct entry should have been SSB for single sideband. Because it didn't understand PH, it defaulted to mixed, which is a category I probably didn't want to be in. The other mistake, though, was fatal. Because of that, the whole file was rejected, and I had an opportunity to correct it. It had to do with the location. It said my location was unknown. Well, let me show you how it was that I was able to create those errors. In my frustration in trying to get this thing to come out right, to actually generate a file and not find errors because it couldn't find that EOH, I had to fill out that form over and over again. So I started just throwing garbage into it to get that part done until I finally got a file that, that worked. And then I came back up to the header and started editing it here by hand. This is where I got in trouble. You'll see here that in the log, it shows the mode as being PH for phone. So up in the header, when it said category mode, I put a PH in there as well. Then I had to come up with something for location. And I thought that was my state. So I put WA in there, which is the same thing that I was using down here. Well, it turns out that what you put in the header doesn't match what goes in the log. First of all, 
the mode isn't pH for phone. It has to be SSB. That solves that one. And then for my location, it turns out that the state of Washington is divided into two sections, and I needed to list it as WWA for Western Washington. Now that error was fortunate because it gave me an opportunity to resubmit this file. I created a new message, sent it back to the ARRL with the corrected file attached to it, and only moments later they sent me this message saying thank you for entering the contest and submitting your log in Cabrillo format. Success! I got it done. I got it sent off. So let's do a quick review of the steps you need to go through to convert an ADF file to the Cabrillo format. If you're using QRZ.com as your logbook, bring it up there. Frankly, QRZ.com is probably not the choice that most contactors pick, but it's what I was working with. Add the necessary rules to filter your records to get just the ones you want to submit. Export and then download the ADI file to your computer. Next, open that file in WordPad. Save it again as a plain text document. Launch the converter program. Fill in all the fields and use Browse to select your API file. Click Generate to create the new Cabrillo file. Use a text editor again to make any needed corrections to your file. Save it again using your call sign dot log and send it off to the ARRL. That's how you do it. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.